Hi, I'm Jessie. I'm a content specialist at Sepio, and this is another interview where I sit down with industry experts and talk about hardware security. Hi, Monique. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer some questions today. Looking forward uh, to it. The first question I have for you is, can you please tell me about yourself and your experience with cybersecurity? Yeah, um, you know, my background, I've spent a long time in the um, technology industry. I don't even want to say how many years, but over 30. Um, I spent the good part of that first part of my career in consulting. Um, and in 1999, I joined my first corporate, um, Bell South, um, as a as a divisional CIO. Um, and then eventually, about three years into my tenure, became their first, one of their first CISOs. Um, and so I've been in cybersecurity as a CISO for about 17 years. Um, I've done that work across the telecommunications, banking, and insurance industries. Um, and I would say um, in 2003, when we first um, looked at being a CISO, it was really around protecting the network from what was then some very early Microsoft attacks and things that we weren't used to addressing to now um, cybersecurity is really a core function in any organization. And the truth is because every company has become so digital, um, the need to protect your assets and your capabilities with strong um, cybersecurity capabilities is even more and more just at the core of the business service that every company provides particularly in financial services, banking, insurance, but really at this point across the patch, across almost every industry in the globe. And how have you seen hardware security issues play out in various fields of your career? Yeah, you know, it's very interesting because I think people don't really understand um, what hardware security is. It really is something getting into the physical assets itself and being able to change or interrupt the the logical or the non-hardware, the, the software side of that, those assets. And it's interesting, they started with, them with things sitting in the middle of your network. Um, I've seen it um, across my career, you know, early on with ATM security um, and really people starting to filter money from ATM machines, because really a lot of the goal of the cyber criminal is to get at your money. Um, and then to more sophisticated attacks where information, you know, where, where hardware is put in the middle of your network in order to gain information and critical business strategies and insights. Um, I saw this with the delegation joining um, at one of the banks that I participated in, in the U that, that I was, was employed by in the U.S. And they actually were there for an innocent meeting um, and actually came away with some pretty critical information about our strategy and where we were moving. And so I think it's very interesting. The logical thought is the bad guys are after your money when in actuality, some of the more, more interesting information is some of your strategies and trade secrets um, that can be used for other purposes. And so you can see it through a bunch of different vectors um, and clearly it's something that we need to look at very specifically. So relating to that, what do you think are the greatest misconceptions about hardware security threats? Yeah, you know, as I look at it, every time um, I talk to my colleagues and my peers about hardware security, um, the first thing they say is, well, we have that covered because we have endpoint covered. Um, and I think everybody believes that hardware security and endpoint security are synonymous when actually they're very related but they're not synonymous. So just because you have protection on all your endpoint and you have visibility to most of your endpoints, it still doesn't tell you if that endpoint is behaving in the way that it should, or that endpoint is actually the endpoint that it says it is. And so I think it's the, the biggest misconception is that you're covered as a CISO or you're covered as a risk officer with your endpoint security and the work that you do from a software side when actually you really do need to worry about that hardware security um, not just your endpoint security and so i think there's some misconceptions that in the market you're safe because you've put into you put into place a lot of endpoint protections and you really do need the both and in your organization 
Um, and, you know, that's, you know, endpoint is not going to catch that a skimmer has been put in between your ATM or that there's something that's been plugged into your network that isn't supposed to be there. Um, that really requires that the hard, that really requires the hardware, the hack part or the hardware component of your security posture. And have the changes in the world brought on by coronavirus impacted hardware security? Yeah, you know, we, especially with COVID, as I look at COVID in the world that we're in, people are at home and they're buying their own cameras and they're buying their own keyboards and devices. Um, the, the, the process of, of ensuring that what you're getting is what, you, what, you're, what you're seeing on the kit or what you're seeing on the box is super important. I mean, the, the safety of your supply chain and ensuring that the, the devices and how they come through your supply chain are indeed what you're adding into your network is absolutely critical and highlighted to everyone who hoped that they wouldn't have to worry about that component, that they have to. Um, you know, the everyone in the past before COVID-19, people were working at home, people were working in the office, but your, your vector, your, your threat landscape was very much controlled um, or what you worried about was that very much that within your control and your network, even though there were people working at home, even though there were people file, flying daily to different meetings across the globe, you worried more about what was in your perimeter. What COVID did and what this work at home did was just open up both leaders and CISOs eyes that, oh my goodness, my vector, my, my landscape and my my platform is so much larger than what's within my controlled environment and I need to worry about this. Um, the fact that there weren't enough PCs, there weren't enough webcams, there weren't enough, um, you know, basic utilities that everybody needed to have to do their job and everybody went to the Walmart or to the, you know, the Office Depot to get whatever they could so they could work comfortably at home just highlighted the fact of how much more control you needed to have in your network and you see that. Um, as firms now are really trying to work harder and control the perimeter of their network and really make sure that all the devices that are on net are devices that you want to have on net. And what do you think is the greatest risk to hardware security? Um, the risk to the company of having insecure hardware on your network is the the that is, is for most companies, networks are incredibly flat. And so one bad device providing entry into your network, um, put on by an innocent child trying to play a game on their dad's computer because you know that's, how, that's, that's the best computer in the house, has the potential to get into your network and take down your business and actually encrypt the um, devices on your network or take steal valuable information or divert funds to different locations can really affect the full um, efficacy of your business. Um, and it's just, it doesn't take much. And so I think the biggest worry is that you need to really focus on that one thing can actually have a huge impact on the outcome of your company's business. It is, it is business enabling to keep going. And people don't, there is that, you know, I do really believe one of the biggest worries is as people believe and gain comfort that they've put so much money and time into securing their endpoints from a software perspective, they're forgetting about the hardware perspective or they're in some false comfort that they're fine and they need to worry about both angles, both hardware protection as well as software protection. So what is it about Sepio system solution that made you want to get involved? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing, you know, as, um, as a CIO slash CISO across big banks and insurance companies, um, I have access and the opportunity to work with a lot of startups and a lot of new companies. And, you know, when I met Yossi and the team at Sepio, there was, there was a few things that really stood out for me about why why this is a special place and why I wanted to be a part of this place. Um, the first, you know, I look at a few things every time I look at a startup either to use or to participate with. And the first is the quality of the team. Um, and when you look at the team at Sepio, they are industry veterans. They're some of the best um, security, cybersecurity strategic thinkers. They have 
um, experience and success in starting up other companies and driving solutions. And so the first, you know, looking at the team, and they're also really nice guys. So looking at the team as a whole, that was incredibly pr provocative. The second thing I then look at, okay, well, do they have a product? Um, you know, and I remember sitting in the office with Yossi and a couple of the folks on his team and saying, show me a demo. And the first thing they do is they show you how they create the map of your network. And they were just then gonna move on. They really didn't pay that much attention to that capability being available. And they were gonna move on to show me how they blocked it and what they could do with it once they knew it was on. And I'm like, stop, right there. Show me, what is this that I'm looking at? And they said, well, this is the map of the network. And I go, well, how did you get that? Did you put it in? Like, how do you know it's there? And they go, no, 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 we just found it. You know, that's what our tool does. It, 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 it it scans the net, it scans your network and it gives you all the components on there. I can tell you that in every company I've been in, that is never complete. That is the hardest thing to get at. And it was just a byproduct of the cap product or the capabilities that they built in the tool so they could do this hardware access security. So step one, you can, you can, it, it is worth everyone's um, time to take the, to take, spend some time with the team give them access to your network or a subset of your network and have them create that map. Because I'll tell you what, you can spend millions and millions of dollars trying to build your CMDB and it's there and it's very straightforward for them to get that. So first I saw that map and I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. And then the second thing that it does is it actually provides you a lot of insight into what's sitting on that map, what's good, what it alerts you to where you need to look because these devices don't look quite right. Um, it allows online, it allows you to block that capability very straightforwardly. It's a beautiful console for your operations um, team to monitor, to see when things change it, 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 and it produces alerts that are very good. So the second thing I look at is, are the capabilities strong? And I saw within my, I don't know, it was an hour or a 90 minute demo that the capabilities were incredibly strong. Um, so there was a there there. Um, and then the third thing I look at, well, are you in a busy space? So is there 15 or 20 other vendors that play or participate in the space you're in? Because then you really, it's hard to break through um, if it's a very busy space thing. So when I looked at it, I liked the team and they were strong. The product was good and it was in a non-busy space. And so to me, that was a very rational and natural um, response to be something that I wanted to be a part of. Thank you so much. That was my final question. Thank you for okay. taking time to answer the questions and providing such informative insights. It was great speaking with you. Thank you. And you.